was quick. <clears throat> Let Facebook uh, build an audience here, and then we'll get started. Good morning. <clears throat> yes, last night was just, it was a blast. It was a blast. It was a blast. All those little kids in here and... The part that I love is is at the end when we have all this candy left over, I mean bags and bags. We must have had, what, probably about 30, 40 bags of candy left. And so I love grabbing them, opening them, and just pouring them all over kids. You know? They love that. <laughs> uh, I felt like a, I don't know, grandpa or something. Well, you had a lot of breakfast at that. Morning, Facebook. <laughs> Diana, Deborah, look what I have, Deborah. Does this look familiar? I should. I just noticed it on the bottom. It says Deborah or Debbie. So it must be yours. <laughs> I just grabbed that. I needed coffee. Grab your coffee. Grab your Bible. And um, we'll be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I love chapter I want to thank everybody that uh, helped us last night at our event. It was a blast. We had so many people in this place. I think next year we're going to have to open it up to um, the dro the parking lot that side. It's Tyler and Roman. We're going to open up that, close all that off, and put everybody on the parking lot, the booths and things like that, and just make it even bigger. So the Lord is good. Let's open up our Bibles to First Corinthians chapter thirteen. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a Christian that doesn't know what this chapter is about. The love chapter, right? Of, of the Bible. Beautiful chapter. Um, we taught from this book at our men's retreat up in Bishop this past August. And it was just a blessing to see all the guys just blessed by it. Um, love truly does uh, never fail. It really doesn't. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your grace. Your mercy is afresh in you every morning, Lord. Thank you for getting us up, Lord, sustaining us and keeping us safe throughout the night, Lord. We do want to lift up New York City, Father, to you. The terrorist act that was, was uh, done there, Lord. <clears throat> we pray for, for peace. We pray for comfort for those that are over there, Lord. Pray for your love and for the gospel to go out, Lord. Pray that you use it to save souls, Father. For the people in Riverside here at the elementary school, Father, um, uh, <clears throat> a parent that uh, blockade themselves in the school there, Lord, and just terrorize some of the children, Father. We just pray for that event. So many things going on in our country, Lord. Uh, we pray for our government, all the scandals that are going on, and what it means, Lord, um, for the rest of the world, Lord. So we just pray, Lord, for our country. We pray for our people. We pray for your work to be done, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for allowing us, uh, Father, to participate in your work, Lord. It was a blast last night, Lord, and we thank you for all the laborers, all those who just uh, were faithful to serve, uh, took care of their booths, Lord God. Um, from beginning to end, Michael would just blew me away uh, how he just loved watching those kids in the jumpers. And the jumper, Lord, just um, having fun, Father. And every time I went to to see if he needed help. He says, no, I'm fine. <laughs> he loved it, Lord. So it was, it was just a neat time of love uh, just being poured out to our community, Father. We pray now you to continue to teach us about love, Lord, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So after the uh, Devo this morning, um, we usually pray here. So if you have any prayer requests, uh, please uh, post them or private message me, and I would love to pray for you. Let's open up our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And again, if you have a cup of coffee, grab your coffee. <coughs> have a seat. Pull out your pencil, your highlighter. And let's, uh, let's look, go ahead and look at chapter 13. Chapter 13 with 13 verses, and it's all about love, right? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a changeling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, now imagine that, 
having enough faith that you can remove mountains. And yet he says, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, imagine that, taking care of all the community and feeding all the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, I don't know if I can imagine being burned, but there were many of believers uh, during the uh, early parts of our uh, country and in Britain and London that were literally burned at the stake. Uh, but even if you do those, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Uh, so Paul is, is making a contrast here between uh, works and, and the heart, right? Uh, he, he's saying that you can have works, but the world's works sometimes can be done in such a way that they're not done in love. They're done for other reasons. Uh, I've seen it in the church. We've seen it in our world. We, we see how people do things and they come off very loving, very caring, uh, very concerned. Uh, they will spend money. They will spend uh, time and so forth. But in, in that whole process, they're looking for a position. They're looking to be a, a pastor of the church or to boot the pastor off and put themselves in just like Satan wanted to do with God. Or they want a political position, want to be president of the United States, and so they spend a lot of money doing those things, uh, a lot of advertising that advertises their, their humanity, their caringness for people, for women, for children, and, and so forth. So we've all seen that. We all get that, right? And, and that's all hypocrisy. Uh, and, and Paul is talking about how, as a believer, that when we do things, whether burning at a stake, uh, whether it's... Um, it's giving to the poor and feeding them that everything should be done in love, in love. And how do we measure that love? Because this is important. And this is the important part of this message, I think, this morning in our de devotion, is that when we do those things, we need to make sure we check our hearts and that we're doing them with love. And if we find any ulterior motive, any ulterior motive that wants to puff us up, make us look better, then it's not love. It's not love at all. And we need to correct ourselves and say, Lord, forgive me for thinking that way. Forgive me that I need to have that person acknowledge me. Forgive me, Lord, that I need you know, that position, Lord. I just want to do this because I love you and I love them. And I don't want to get any benefit from it uh, because it should be given out of love and you should be the only benefit that I receive. You want God to see your heart being pure. And you want God to see the motives uh, that you truly have. And who knows their motives more than but yourself, right? And sometimes there, there are times when you don't even know your own motives. Sometimes this little thought comes in my head when, when I'm doing something. And I have to rebuke and say, no, that's not why you're doing it. So don't let the enemy plant you know, that little thought in your mind either. You know, so rebuke it and, and then do it out of love. So now I'm not accusing anybody, but... You, you want to check yourself if you're being going to be burnt at the stake. You know, you want to make sure you're being burnt at the stake for love. Because <laughs> it's a, it would be a bad thing to all of a sudden be be standing before Jesus. Well, I was burnt at the stake. Yeah, well, you need to do it for love. You know, So love is important here in this chapter. Uh, greater than tongue, greater than the angels, greater than uh, any works that we can do, any, any <clears throat> acts of deeds to the poor, or even if we burn our, our bodies. Uh, for a greater cause. Now we look at verses 4 through 8, and he actually defines love for us. He says, love suffers long, or in some of your Bibles it may say patience. Now as I read these, you will immediately be convicted by the Holy Spirit, because we don't do these. <clears throat> we struggle with all of these. I don't know if there's a person that actually can fulfill all of this completely, but how many of us really suffer long? How many of us are really patient with others, uh, with, with those that we deal with, whether it's commercial or, or whether it's business and so forth? How, how many of us are really patient? Not too many of us are patient. From time to time, God shows us that you can be. And for some reason, you, you can have a spirit where you're just like, oh, everything's so good. That's all right. You just, I'm just really patient today. And, and you're, you're in that place where you're just truly loving, but not too often. So, so the conviction is there, but realize this. Jesus has fulfilled this. Jesus has truly fulfilled all of this. He is the ultimate uh, person of love. So love suffers long or is patient and is kind. Uh, love does not envy. 
Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there are tongues, they'll cease. Whether there's knowledge, it will vanish away. So love is patient. We have to be patient people with one another. God wants us to be just as Jesus is. Love is kind. We should be kind to one another, opening up the doors for others. Um, I just came back from the chiropractor. I wanted to have a full body body uh, makeover <laughs> so that I could go to India without any, any you know, hopefully problems. And um, having to do this Devo and being there at eight, and of course they're opening up at 8.05 because they're late, and I'm just starting to go, oh, I'm gonna be late. And, and, and so um, the door's open and I wanna run to the door and sign up and get, make sure I'm the first one in there, right? So I can get out and do this. And all of a sudden this guy comes uh, kinda wobbling up with, with uh, crutches and the whole bit, and I'm just kinda like, okay, Lord. So I grab the door, I open it, and I say, go ahead. <laughs> and I let him, him go in. He goes, oh, thank you, thank you. He went in, but they took me first, so. So it worked out anyway. But love is kind, uh, doesn't envy. We don't envy one another. We don't envy what others have. Uh, we don't want what others have. We want what God has given us, what God has blessed us with, and we need to take care of those things. Uh, love does not parade itself. It doesn't jump around and say, look at me. Look at what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished. Look at this great ministry of mine. Oh boy, when you start doing that, you've got it all wrong. Uh, the only reason that your ministry is being blessed is because God is being good to you and not because you have anything to parade yourself around with, is not puffed up, is not puffed up, or the word is arrogant, arrogant. We know what that word means. But it behaves, uh, or it does not behave rudely. You know rude? You know what rude is? And every, for some reason, every time I read this, and it's been like this for, for tens, tens of years, first thing I think of is people who burp. It's always, because that is so rude. I think it's so rude that you're standing in line and this guy just belches out. And I'm like, come on, really? Couldn't you hold it, you know? And I know it's hard sometimes when you drink a Coke can or something like that and all that carbonation, but that's always the first thing, thing I think of when I think about does not behave rudely as someone who burps, you know? But that is rude, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so we need to be people that aren't so rude. <laughs> does not seek its own. So again, thinking of others more highly. And I tell you, last night, <clears throat> I just felt the spirit in, in everybody that was just helping. And I think it was the worship added to it, just brought the spirit of God. People were serving. And Chris, what was it, Chris? Is her name Chris? She served from beginning to end, never complained, just faithful. And at the end, I, I went up to her and I said, uh, do you need any more candy or anything? And she looked at me says, and she said, I am really thirsty. I haven't had any water since I've been here. And I'm like, oh, okay, hang on. And I ran in here and I knew there was no water. Because I'm thinking, oh, there's no water. So there was enough water in the, in the uh, sparklets. So I grabbed her a cup of water and ran over and take, she goes, thank you so much. <laughs> and she drank the whole cup. But I tell you, everybody did such a great job. Everybody truly uh, was not thinking about themselves. They were thinking of others. And it, it just showed in the whole event. Uh, love is not provoked, so we're not provoked easy. People want to provoke us, but we're not provoked easy. Thinks no evil. Try doing that. Try not thinking evil. Uh, evil of others, evil of uh, society, evil of people, evil of you know whatever's going on in your life. Doesn't think evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. <clears throat> we don't. We don't. We don't get this sense of yeah. They got it, you know, because of their sin. We're not uh, praising God because someone fell, uh, because they got hurt because of their lifestyle. Um, that's not what God wants because that person is lost and they're going to the pit of hell and God wants to have mercy and grace upon them. Now, I know there are people out there that are so wicked and so wrong and if something happens to them, you know, there's a little sense of, oh boy, they just got theirs, you know. Uh, I kind of look at it as a child. You ever see two brothers, uh, two siblings, and one gets in trouble and the other one just kind of like, yeah, they, I finally got him in trouble, ha, 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 you know, type of, type of attitude. We shouldn't have that attitude. 
Um, everybody, you know, I, I always view people as lost. And if they're wicked, it's because they don't understand it. I don't think they un really truly understand. I know they have a conscience, and I know right, they know right from wrong. But for some reason, they're, they're not in control of their, of, <clears throat> of their spiritual uh, minds and bodies. And they're in bondage to the enemy. And I always look at them from that lens saying, they don't even know what they're doing. And, and so having that heart of forgiveness and understanding. And then you can love them easier when you understand their loss. I mean, they can be in your face and saying all kinds of things. And you're just going, you are so lost. You just don't know the Lord. And, and, and your place is going to be far worse than this place is to you when you die. And, and so having that perspective sometimes helps. So love doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. And it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <clears throat> love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there are tongues, um, the, ter the word tongues there is language in this sense. And it could be speaking of the interpretation of the gift of tongues with this different language that speaks to God. But I want you to notice something, and then we'll interpret the last uh, the five verses here. That Paul is ending this, this definition of love here in verse 8 in the sense that there, these things will all cease also. So the tongues will cease. Prophecy will cease. These gifts that God has given to the church one day will cease. When will they cease? That's the question. When will they stop functioning in the body of Christ? There are some that believe there are no gifts today. There's no gifts of miracles. There's no gift of tongues. There's no gift of prophecy. They believe those all ceased when Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, and went to heaven when he ascended to heaven. There was no need for that anymore because now we have the word of God. We must go by the word of God. And I agree that we must go by the word of God and we have the word of God. We should always check everything with the word of God, whether it's prophecy, tongues, or any other gifts that we have. Even our hearts, we should check uh, our motives with the word of God. So, if those things are ceasing, when are they ceasing? Well, let's look at verse uh, 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. So, <clears throat> there's a lot of information out there. And... We don't have all that information. Some people are able to retain a lot of information, but even the information they have is very little compared to what's out there in the world. And so we don't know a whole lot. If you take a pie, you know, slice it in, in half, and you got one half and another half makes the whole. It's like it, slice it in quarters, four quarters, and keep slicing it until it's like maybe 32 slices to make a whole. And you take one of those 32s, and that's probably all the knowledge we probably have in the whole world compared to the rest of the pie as an individual. And so we don't know a whole lot. We prophesy in part. So there's a lot we just don't understand and know. But, he says, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. Now, what is that which is perfect? So some suggest that it's Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that when he comes, that all these things will be done away with. Um, that which is part will be done away with. So we have to look at the word perfect. <clears throat> now, the word perfect in the Greek can mean complete. So it could mean that when we are completed, then everything uh, will be done away with. There's no need for it. When will, be, when will we be completed? When we get to heaven is when it will be completed. And then he says, when I, he gives an analogy, and this is an analogy of, of what he's saying in truth in this chapter. He says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Um, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, love, hope, and these three, but the greatest of these is love. So we see dimly in a mirror, but one day we'll see face to face. Who will see face to face? Jesus. We'll stand before him, and he'll know us completely. We know in part, but then one day we'll know all things. When will that happen? When we're in with Jesus. And so what 
Paul, I think, is saying to the Corinthian church, which is very carnal, is, is look, all these things that you are so involved in and that are holding on to, uh, gifts of tongues, prophecies, your works, you, you sacrifice, all these things, they're nothing. They are nothing. What, what really matters is love and that you're loving in the way that God has commanded us to love. <clears throat> the Apostle John makes it very clear in the gospel, but also in, in 1 John. He says several times, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so love is not a sacrifice. It is a keeping of obedience. Love isn't burning yourself at the stake. Hey, let me show you how much I love you, and I'll go burn, get, get burnt at the stake. No, the person would probably say more, more like, let me show you how much I love you by my obedience to you. And that's your evidence that you are following and keeping his commandments is, and that you love him by keeping those commandments. And so we are to love. And love is not an emotion, though it brings on emotions. And that's a... a, a good aspect to understand about love um, sometimes we want to love people through our emotions you know well I just I just love you I feel it uh, I feel connected to you I feel no animosity to towards you and so I can love you well then how do you reconcile when Jesus says that we ought to love our enemies how do you reconcile that see because your enemy you don't you don't really feel it you're not connected you know, with them. And so love is an act of obedience to God, that you love one another as God has loved us. And we were all enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet he gave his life uh, so that we would have eternal life. So having the love in our hearts of obedience to the Lord is what the Lord requires. So, so good thought today. Um, think about that. Have love for one another care about one another, and the Lord will just take care of the rest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your, your word, Lord. And just a reminder, Father, that was the reason we even came to the Lord Jesus Christ, was because Jesus loved us. <clears throat> it, it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. And I know in my case, Lord, it blew, it blew my mind that God would forgive me of all my wretched sin and wash it and cleanse me completely as though I never did it before. Oh, Father, what an amazing God we serve. A one who has bathed us in his love and tears and compassion and mercies, Lord. Father, help us to be like him, Lord. Teach us, Lord God. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Um, please keep me in prayer. I'll be in uh, a pastor's conference next week, so... We're figuring out how we're going to do the devos. I'll probably do them from over there. Um, but following the pastor's conference, I got one day back here, and then I'm heading off to uh, India on the 10th through the 21st. So I'd appreciate your prayers. Uh, and if you would like to support that work, then please check out our website, calvarychapelinland.org, and go to the donations, and there is a short missions uh, donation button. You can donate any amount in there is appreciative and it's as though you're going there with me and the Lord will bless you because of it and your faithfulness. God bless. Have a wonderful day.